Mm, it's a solid. Yeah. Better upgrade from my first go around. Welcome back. You can holler at us on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty. You can catch our guest today and second appearance, uh, Matt Foreman at Fat Mormon on Twitter. You can find Jay at Jay Wayne's World, and you can find myself at IMC Myers. So, who's it gonna be? <laughs> We're going Nikhil Harry. All right, we settle on Harry. Wait, wait, no, Nikhil. Of course, had to work a little. Uh, Wait, what was that, Nikhil? <laughs> I don't think they got it. Maybe one more, <laughs> Nikhil. <laughs> Your hands are freezing. I don't know how many times we're gonna get to use that. Maybe when uh, we talk about players who have drops, you know, we could be like, "Well, Your hands are freezing." <laughs> Well, we'll go. We'll go. We'll at least get another run out of the hairy thing with the mock it up, fuck it up For after sure. the draft. So Hopefully, be fun. If, if he turns out to be really awesome, we can use it more often. So, what are the odds that happens? Well, let's figure that out right now. Yeah. All right. Let's go right on on the combine. Height came in at six two and three eight. So we'll go six two. We're rounding down. Rounding down with a three eight. Not above the half. Right. If it's at half, do we go half? <sighs> you know what? I think that's a good idea. I think you should go half. And then anything above the half, we round up. Technically, <laughs> the math rule is that you round up with a point five, but I like the half. All right, we'll give you the half. We'll give you the half. Goes up from there. Weight two twenty eight, ninety fifth percentile. Strong. Strong and quite strong. Also very strong. Twenty seven bench reps, ninety ninth percentile. Oh uh, yeah, wingspan seventy eight and a quarter, so seventy eight, sixty eighth percentile. <laughs> That's a ding. Yeah, 68th percentile is a ding? Yeah, C, that's not even a C. C's get degrees. <laughs> D's, like, what had to happen with D's was, is I think Bush had to put, like, no student left behind, and we curved that thing up, and yeah. we got all those people. Yeah, in. I mean, if you curve, that's probably a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> Arm length, 78th percentile. There's your C plus. 33, C plus. C's get degrees. Where do you, where's your optimum breakout arm length? Uh, I mean, I mean, ninety fifth percentile. That's what you're looking Come for. On. I want, I want pterodactyl wings. Go, go, gadget. Mm. Well, we're not talking about Butler yet. Well, I don't even know where his wings are, but it's, it's, it's he's like Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I think they call him the Condor. Um. So, wingspan and arm length, both in the ninety eight. <laughs> his arms, <laughs> his arm span breakout is. Yeah. Off the charts. It's breakout arm span. Uh, and, and dominator. <laughs> and his, his arm span dominator. Uh, right, right, right. The wingspan dominator. So the 40 yard dash, 5'3, 45th percentile. Mm. Mm. Hand size, 9.5, 61 percentile. Nah. Mm. But he does, they, they, they do show up strong in, in certain times. Those, the those, hands. Those medium sized uh, <laughs> meat hooks of his. Sometimes yeah. there's there's drops, there's drops, but there are also some very, very solid catches. He's a ball squeezer. <laughs> um, vertical jump, 38, 38, 84th percentile. Broad jump, 122, 62 percentile. That's a little bit of a dig. Bench press, 27s, <laughs> as Jay Wayne mentioned, 99th percentile. Right there with DK Metcalf. Right there with DK Metcalf, that broad jump. I mean, I don't know what Calvin Ridley's broad jump was, but. Yeah, we proved that that doesn't matter. Right. Because, you said, know, well, I, I, don't, I don't know when the last time I lined up against somebody and had broad, broad jumped jump. out of my break. <laughs> that was what Calvin Ridley had to say about that. Are you saying Calvin Ridley didn't disprove the broad jump over there, uh, Fat Mormon? I'm just saying he had some big games and some, he had a few big games and. So the, padded some stats so there. So the 10 touchdowns for a rookie, that doesn't really do yeah, much I mean, for you. I mean, he had some big games. They're just putting it to that. All right. And that's a, that's somehow not a good thing. I mean, but he had some bad, some some non-existent games. So yeah. I mean, he's well, a rookie. Rookie. Rook, rookie wide receivers typically take a little while. Julio Jones was a nice bonus. on the other side. It was a nice bonus for him. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I'm not cer I'm not certainly not buying in where he is right now. It's, I'm, it's I'm not, it's, I'm it's not purchasing him right now. He's very price. expensive, but I'm not mad at him. No. I ain't mad at him. Yeah. All right, so let's get down and dirty with Harry here. <laughs> Little bio from the island of St. Vincent. Mm, fun facts. Moved to Arizona with his grandmother when he was Chandler, very young. Arizona. Hmm. So let's stay at home for college. Yep. Got in there. Grandma said, uh, need you to stay in the state. 
she he had a life alert just to make sure grandma was all right every senior citizen <laughs> should wear life alert <laughs> i don't know if that's true it's who knows how old his grandma is she could be in great shape she could be in the 90 something percentile and grandma's who knows well, should we jump? Let's jump into the percentile in here. So he, he crushed receptions and had tons of production receptions. Uh, How many beers have you had? Uh, just just like one. This is this is two. I had one before one, one pre-meeting. All right. So the hubbub about him is the breakout age is good and the dominator is good. The breakout age and the college dominator has all the metrics. People very, very excited. Tighten the pants. Six to midnight. <laughs> very nice. A lot of dick jokes just happen rapidly. <laughs> So, does the fact that he can't separate matter because... For all the girls out there, <laughs> moist in the downstairs. <laughs> Sploosh. <laughs> we don't want to discriminate because there's girl fantasy football lovers Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. All right. So, <laughs> how about this breakout age in the Dominator? What do we... I, it's not, like how, not my wheelhouse, so I'll let somebody right. else uh, take it away. Matt, I mean, I mean he how was, much does it matter, Matt? I mean, it matters. I think it definitely matters, but I think one of the things is he was kind of like the only show in town there for a while. Right. I mean, they do have um, uh, uh, Eno Benjamin there. Yeah, the running Pretty back. Pretty solid running looks, back. Looks Pretty fun. S- yeah. Definitely, for and sure. And Balage was for there. For sure. Balage yeah. and, and Balage. Richards combo. But Balazs was a little bit of had some good nice receptions in his in his mm. day. But the converted doesn't, defense doesn't, event doesn't doesn't take anything away from Harry's kind of reception totals and and what he did on the field because I think you are right. I don't know who else was really there taking too much away from the him. last Arizona State receiver I can remember was Jalen Strong. Right. But other than that, oh, I do. Uh, who's is it? Kyle Williams is he the other guy that that's there that makes plays when you're watching Harry? Is that what his name is? Williams sounds remember. right, but that he looks he looks good out there, so I'm not going to take that away from him. But probably not. No, he's probably no Nikhil Harry, but right. So, is that is that cause for moving him near the top of your board? Is that like something that like kind of all you need to see? You just need to see that breakout age and that dominator rating be where it is, and then that's you know that's good enough for you to put him put him up near the top. Why why is that so important for you? I think there's been too many stats that say that those things are important. I think. When it comes to wide receivers, I think the metrics are more important when it comes to running backs because of more important for receivers than when than it is for running backs. Yes, and I think the metrics guys would. And you, by metrics, you mean these the breakout age, the, and the breakout age called versus like your combine metrics. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think the col- I think the combine metrics are important as well too. I just think that college production has shown to be more consistently consistently meaning that they're going to see success in the NFL as well too. There's but there are guys that have succeeded that didn't Correct. I'm not saying I'm not saying if you don't have a if you don't have a high college dominator or high breakout age you're not going to succeed in the NFL. I'm not saying that by any by any means I'm just saying it seems to be a big indicator of future success when it comes to wide receivers. So I like seeing that. I don't think it's that okay, he's got a he's got an 80th percentile college dominator rating, put him to the top of your board. I'm just saying that's definitely a big check in in that box. I think that's fair. I think it's fair to use those things and say that, you know, there is some some data to back it up, but there's plenty of other receivers that hit not using um, breakout age and the, the proper 18 to 19 breakout age and the college dominator necessarily, you know, and depending on who it is, it, the, the stats could be skewed for the college dominator. And and same thing of like you maybe you really didn't have anybody there and you were a pretty good player and you got pumped more balls your way at 18 or 19 to help the breakout age kind of increase. So there are ways around it a little bit and I, th- I think plenty of players in the league have succeeded without having uh those certain metrics but yes i agree that when it has it it's something that you need to look at especially when it's a higher end prospect it could be a, a nice tipping point or a, you know help to weigh the scales a little bit and in, in um yeah, maybe and, and, a player being somebody who would potentially be a little safer which i think is what i think majority of people think harry is about as safe as they come right now out of a lot of these receivers. I wouldn't say he's the most safe, but of the three we're talking about tonight, yes, I think he is the most safe of those okay. three. But I mean, we're not talking about we're not talking about like 75th percentile. We're talking about 95th percentile for breakout age and 88th percentile for college. Yeah, so those young. Are, those are strong numbers. Yeah, strong. Pretty strong. All right, well, let's get into the You got anything else, Jay Wayne? What do you got? Uh, some nice nice comps on uh well, if, uh, do you have any more on breakout age and dominator? Well, so I, I was looking into it, trying to figure out, I've kind of written it off, but I feel like it does 
does have a place, and I wanted to know why, wh- when it matters, and why it matters more than another aspect of your game. Like, I know people might not like Butler because he's got a late breakout age, but his combine metrics are off the charts. So I'm like, how do you know when you're supposed to pick and choose what what matters? And and I think I oh, guess we'll get into that. Oh, we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll get into that. Let's do it. Well, we'll, we'll get in later. We'll wait, later. We'll wait later. Till we'll wait till happens. Butler. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, it looks like. Looking at this chart that I found on DLF, and I think it was by uh, our boy Pa Howdy, Peter Peter Howdy. Um, he's he's got it breaking down, Peter breaking Howard. down for you. How- great great bloke, How- Howard. Yeah, yeah but it's-, it's Howdy. Well, that's his Twitter handle. Well, I like the Pa Howdy. Yeah, well, that's, you can call him that. That's his Twitter handle. Right. He's Peter Howard is his actual name. Howard. My bad, Peter. <laughs> it's, so it's coming by like this coming from Jay Wayne over here, <laughs> Dwayne Wayne, <laughs> or Slay Wayne. Uh. Or just Jason. So oh, you went government on him. He's got <laughs> he basically sixty percent of all first round wide receivers hit, and by hit they can finish. They they finished with a top twenty four PPR score. So they're like basically a wide receiver two. You you put down a wide receiver two season, you're considered that you hit. Um, just one. I mean, yes, at least at least one season with a top twenty four PPR finish. Uh, and that, so that doesn't seem like a great hit to me, but <laughs> it seems low too. I mean, anyway, continue. it's setting the bar low. So yeah. I, I guess I kind of like that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Don't I set the Brashad Perry low standards equals high results. <laughs> 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 not, not besmirching the work of one Pa Howdy limited yeah. options equals bad situation. Yeah. I think that's what you <laughs> continue on. So basically, but so 60% of first round receivers hit. And I think that's that overall, that's the stat. But then the, those that had a breakout age of 18 or 19, they have like a 70% chance of hitting, whereas uh, 20 and above, you know, it's only like 50% for 20. And then there, I guess there's not 21%. There was, a, I, I don't know, there's, it depends on the sample size. So like there was three players since 2001 drafted in the first round who had a breakout age of 22 and all of them hit. But that's but not a big enough sample size. Because that's only three, it's not a big enough sample size. Otherwise, that would debunk this whole argument because you would say 100% of 22-year-old breakout ages hit. So you, I guess it's not big enough. I don't know if nine is big enough to count 21 or not. Anyway, the point is there's several players that don't have this breakout age that, that have hit. I think, so here's the, I think here's the other thing, too. When you're, are you talking about just first-round draft picks? I, I was I was right there. I don't think it's I don't specific, think uh, what he was just talking about. I don't I think he was. Harry's not a first round draft pick. I mean, I haven't seen anywhere him going there. Rarely is he going in the first round. When you get into the second round, the numbers are more even basically across the board. It's like if you 18 drops down to 25 percent. And I, just, I feel like that is so conducive on what's available in the draft class as well and the needs for right. all those other people so that, you know. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't by any means call this a strong wide receiver draft class, but it, it, it's yeah, I, it's pretty decent at the top. I will say that it's decent at the top. But to yeah. me, these numbers, like, I guess if you're torn on a guy and you don't know between a couple guys, you right. could let this be the deciding factor. But I, or it could help you weigh in on based uh, on me trying to figure out what all this means. I don't think there's any chance I'm going to let this be one of my original, like one of my leading off argument points of well, the breakout age. Right. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Done deal. It's not done deal. It's to, it's it's but a, that's it's, how people act sometimes. Like sure, it's a good positive. Yeah, sure. I, I, I agree. That that's a that, I think that's the best way to put it. It's an it's a very it's a high check mark. Good positive. It's, and a, a it's nice the, starting. It's, it's near at the top of the list. Maybe not for me, but it's a good. But it's a good. I agree with you though. But it is a good. It's a good po- Good step in the right direction to to maybe potentially lowering the percentage of. Maybe missing on a player that you're going to draft. When you're splitting hairs, I definitely think that's a metric sure, you need to I, take, in, sure. take into consideration. I can Agreed. I can agree with that. All right, so let's get into what we actually think about the on-field play of this guy, which of all these players really, which I think sometimes gets lost in all these other things. And when we talk about Butler, I think there are some t- uh, some reasons why the breakout age might be a little later than it is. So uh, we'll see what happens. Kyle Williams also was the other receiver at Arizona State who was making some pretty good plays, but all those really good plays all said and done when he was a, a 
In 2017, the stats for Kyle Williams is 13 games played, 66 receptions, 763 yards, and seven touchdowns. And then this year, 44 receptions, uh, played all 13 games, 449 yards, and two touchdowns. So to your point, uh, it looks good when he's out there and he makes some plays, but not, uh, not any, getting the ball. any sort of stud n- no. uh, lining up alongside of uh, Harry here. So with that being said, what is your first uh initial impression of harry with the on the field play who hmm. wants it i will guess first matt what do you got yeah. i so i thought that he was able to win big and small because i thought he was able to win big by using that size which we talked about we were just talking about with his ability to set not separate with maybe his route running or his his breaks but he's able to use his great body control he's able to use that to his advantage where he's going to put himself in great situations where he's going to he's going to use his the sidelines or he's going to use his body to be able to get open in those small windows and that I think that translates well to the NFL and with his agility he can I think he's great after the catch I I would I wouldn't call him running back esque after the draft or after the catch, but he can definitely run with the ball after the catch. We saw him. Agreed. We saw him on multiple occasions on film, literally change fields and be able to make. I would say solid it's one of yards his after that. Top traits. Is, yes, that might have been Kent State, but but there's there's plenty of examples of him getting like the tunnel screens and the bubbles. Yeah, and, and playing very well off of those, and you know some some slants, but uh, and and. You know, shrugging defenders off, and I think he's quicker when the ball's in his hands than not in his hands. Yeah, he does a good job transitioning as a runner when he gets the ball in yeah, his hands. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I would I would agree that he's a pretty solid after the catch. I don't know, I don't know if maybe he gets maybe too much credit for it, or maybe Butler doesn't get enough. I don't know one of those two, but it's definitely a plus. I think I, I, I can agree with that. And I, I like and the I th- big the big the weight in this the ninety fifth percentile weight and the and the and the strength definitely show up when the ball's in his hands and he's moving around yeah and i too like you matt I, i'm impressed with his ball skills in tight quarters you know he seems to have a good wherewithal where the ball's coming and he he really does well in a tight contested arena which think, is where he usually is yeah is right because of his inability to separate would be my i don't know if that was my first impression but you get that impression after watching the tape you're like man this guy doesn't ever really get that much separation from these defensive backs and he gets some late and yeah. he also doesn't need a ton because he's a he great separator has the good hands and uh but you're right so is that is that a major cause for concern the fact that he might can't separate des couldn't separate i think there's the i mean des separates late well you were you were t- well and, and that's really kind of all that matters um I think he has decent field awareness, uh, Harry. Um, I think you were you were talking about it off air, and we were talking about uh, kind of how like a lengthier receiver is the kind of the separation we like to say that a lot. Right. Harry, Harry is not quite at the threshold of being lengthy enough to necessarily, but I think you were bringing up a decent point of saying how he uses his strength at the end of routes right. to create a little bit of extra separation and he doesn't need much because he is so good in traffic in contention when the ball's in the air like it's his ball he jump he jumps well he times the jumps well when it's in traffic it's a lot of guys will be like oh it's kind of my ball whose ball is it like when it's up in the air it's his ball. most of the time it's harry's ball he definitely has a my ball mentality and i think his best play his best move is the back shoulder fade he really crushes that does he separate a ton no but when you're 228 pounds and you're that strong, all you have to do is just turn away from the defender and you've gained a little bit of separation, which is what you see in the NFL because there's just not that much separation. And I agree, the strong vertical jump uh, and his ability to high high point drink uh, the ball is, is usually pretty good. So, <clears throat> uh, Would you say there was any positive regression? Drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I, I mean, he crushed all three years. Yeah. That's the thing about this guy is he was had a bunch of positive regression. Right. No, 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 no. Wait, is that a thing? You can't positive. Oh, you sure, you sure can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why we drank. Right. OK. Uh, but the, the, I would say the other thing is like, is he slower than his 40 time? Because the 40 time was a four, five, three, which isn't the worst. It is, I guess, below average based on uh, 
that that stat there. He's in the forty fifth percentile, but it's it's not a four four. It's not four five five. It's four five three. You know, it it's counts. it's faster than it's faster than people thought he was going to run. People were expecting him to run in the four right. sixes. Yeah, they looked at that as basically a positive right. for this guy. Yeah. That was a huge win for him. Right. Yeah. When because when you saw DK on tape, I mean, yeah, the guys, the guy was a probably. I mean. Four three three was a great number, regardless. But right. People knew he was going to be fast. I don't know that they knew he was going to be that fast, but you're right. They did know he was going to be fast, and they were excited about it, and he crushed it. But I mean, the fact that a lot of people were concerned about this guy's speed before the combine tells me that he, he's probably a little slower than what he even ran. And I mean, you don't ever see him running away from anyone. He doesn't not, have not a second really. year unless he broke two or three tackles. And there's nobody else to tackle him is typically the only time when he's really kind of running away from from people. Um, so I don't know any. Uh, what what else you guys got? What do you what do you see from him in, in the route tree? We kind of touched on it for a second, but so I, I think, you know, we kind of talk about DK's route tree being a, very limited. I, I don't think it's nearly as limited as what uh, I don't think Harry's. Uh, tree is nearly as limited as uh, Metcalf's there, but I I don't think he had like some crazy route tree. It was a lot of the similar things happening. Like he right. did run a lot of tunnels and bubbles. Sure, he had some slants, but yeah, and and a couple of digs. Um, he looked good but, on a crossing route. He can sit well in zones. But I mean. for the most part, it seemed like he was winning on on fades and and nines and a lot of a lot of tunnels and bubbles and a couple of comebacks. And I don't think it was a super expansive route tree. Now, the thing that you do like is that it was from left to left slot, right slot, right. So yeah. he was moving all around and doing, you know, some different things. Yeah, and I, th- I think that his ability to play all over the field is definitely a huge win for him because I think he could play well in the slot in the NFL because he's not going to be a guy who's going to be your downfield burner. He's going to be your possession guy who right. wins with his strength. He wins with his, right. his ball skills. And if he can... If he's gonna be, I'm not. He, if he's gonna be Michael Thomas Ian, then that's fine with me. That's I mean, one of the comps. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a bit strong of a I comp. I do too. Yeah, I think the comp I just looked up. I was showing with Casey was that something I just thought of is Allen Robinson. Yeah, I think there's well, a lot of similarities there. Compared to Des there. Bryant, and Des Bryant's comp was Allen Robinson. Robinson and vice yeah, versa. exactly. So I think that's a. But Herm Edwards said he he, he reminded him of Des Des Bryant. That's his coach. Yeah, but I mean, Allen Robinson wins downfield when he when he was at the Jags. He won downfield with his with his ball skills. That's one of the best things he his did. Body his, control. His body is. control exactly. So if you can if you can get Allen Robinson out of Nikhil Harry, I think that's a huge win. I don't think he quite is going up in the air like Allen yeah, Robinson but Al, does. You, but you know what Allen Robinson's forty time was at the combine. It's probably slower than his four six zero. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do. I I don't know what I can't speak to Allen Robinson's route running ability at that point. It was at, at it was college. It, it was career, strong. It was but strong. I'm, I think it's bad, and that's one of the reasons. And then he that worked I, on that nonstop when right. he got into the pros. And we with, we uh, talked a lot about that. Allen Hearns. Uh, yeah, well, him and Hearns worked on it a lot, and that's one of the things that I really really like about Allen Robinson is that I think his route running is super crispy, and I think that's something that lacks a little bit in. Butler's or sorry, um, Harry's game here is that I don't think he's the best route runner. Like I think there's definitely some room for improvement. Um, it's good enough, but it's not great. Right. It's good enough certainly to win in college, and I think it'll translate pretty well to the pros. But I think he has to get better at. He could use some seasoning in that in that aspect for sure. Um, so I, basically, my a, a big thing for me is like when he's. Uh, making his release at the line or maybe breaks at the top of routes like it, he's there's too much pitter pattering with the feet. I, I was joking with these guys and I said sometimes it looks like he's the Flintstones <laughs> trying to start their car <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. And, and to me, I don't love that. Um, no. but that, that's that's a technique thing that you can work on, I think. And, and yeah, he just like takes like 10 different and then he goes left like right. every time. He just needs some coaching up. That's all. And yeah. sure. and. and I don't know what kind of, and he also changed offensive systems in this last year with right. good, old, big, good old Herm there. So, you, I mean, we'll see what happens. You can't coach the things that he does really well right exactly. now. There's some good in, intangible ability there. Like, I think, and I just talk shit on his route running, but you likened it to it while we were talking pre, pre-show pre here. I think one of the things that he does well is when he's running a nine or a fade, he gets his corner to kind of bend in towards the numbers a little bit more and leaving his quarterback more space to get him to that sideline kind of back shoulder ball a little bit and I think Harry does that time and time again and then he's so good at the contested catch point even on underthrown balls like it's his ball so I think he does a really good job with that yeah 
And you got to like the versatility. You guys, you touched on it. He plays all over the field. I think he does a lot of work from the slot, and I, I like him in that role. I mean, in today's NFL, these players need to move all over the place. And and like you said, off air, I think he can win outside, and I think he can also probably excel in the slot with a little bit of off coverage. A lot of people are saying that's maybe where they would like to see him for the right. most part. I think right. something that was underrated with these wide receivers is I really like Harry's blocking. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty solid. I mean, the, you can only find one game in 16, and that my first impression was this isn't very good, but he was a freshman. And then you see him from 17 to 18, and it improved every year. Yeah. And he was really getting after it, and I, I definitely think that's a plus for sure. He's also really durable, like really no – Yeah, nothing. I think he had a leg injury in Colorado that he picked up. He was, like, hobbling for a minute. Uh, but he gutted it out the rest of the way. I think they had a bye week the next week, and he didn't miss any time. Um, but, I mean, he had three straight years of, of a ton of production – um, he does some work in the punt return game, so I mean that's that that's a good like sign that. for me with 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 agility. If I can see a wide receiver sure. back on punt return, especially when you're only running four five three, I mean most of your punt returner guys are guys running your your electric, four threes, your four fours. Kind of guys. But if you can get a stocky guy running four five three and being your punt returner, I mean that's either saying a lot about his agility or a lot about your team's overall speed. So <laughs> well, could be could be one of two things, but I think it it you know. It likens, definitely speaks to his run after the catch. Right, ability. that's what I was going to say. I say it likens to one of the points that you know you guys made earlier of his run after the catch ability being pretty good. Is you know he may not be the fastest guy on the field. I think he's a little faster with the ball in his hands, and he sees the field well when he has it in his hands, and he's a tough bring down. So that leads to where you know it's, it is a good thing to see him punt return. You could yeah get gain early value, and we we always talk about the special teams play of, of a person can get you more reps on an NFL field quicker if you can excel in that area. I don't think with where he's going to be drafted at the best. No, I don't think it's an issue. I think yeah, I think he I, I I think he comes in. I think he comes in as a. No, a yeah, wide sure. an NFL team's wide receiver too. Agreed. Maybe three on a solid wide. And like if he gets drafted by like this, let's say he goes to the Steelers or something like that. I mean, yeah, he might be their three there, but I mean, I think at, that's his floor. But yeah, I think he steps in right away as a as a NFL wide receiver too. One, I think one of the last things I'll say is a little bit of a slight worry is that I'm not not a hundred percent sure about the press coverage sometimes i'm not really sure what's going on and i think sometimes you're not sure if he's blocking or just getting jammed up for a while yeah and i think at the next level you'll have faster and, and more adequate d-backs and you'll see them maybe with the ability to kind of squat down on them a little bit more because they're not super scared of being burnt off that jam and him beating him deep because he's not super elite with the long speed so it could be something that you know be a, a slight concern yeah but overall really really like what harry's doing and i think the intangibles of of his game are uh very solid yeah i think uh i don't know i don't know how much to worry about the separation i i think i guess he's big enough that that he should be fine and maybe they work him in the slot to get him off some press and get him against weaker corners as well there too yeah yeah smaller all right well we'll save the, we'll save the uh the fantasy breakdown for the we're about to go talk about uh, Hakeem Butler, so check that out on the on the uh, next. Uh, we're gonna take a little break here. Yeah, and then we're gonna put them all in a ranking, and we'll, we'll talk about them fantasy wise and where we like them and and maybe where they stack up against some running backs. If anyone's interested in who you're taking at one one or whatever, I don't know. We can talk about all we'll, that. We'll have a, a, a thorough rankings discussion afterwards. Could, little, could be contentious. Mm. Or pretentious. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back. We're going to break. <laughs> this is the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game.